Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official GRE guide, official guide to the GRE, the fourth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book, this book is in front of you when we are working together. Today we will solve two problems that appear on page number 187. And these problems are what are known as quantitative comparison. Quantitative comparison. They are so called because we are supposed to, we are to compare two quantities. Quantity, the quantity that appears in column A and quantity that appears in column B. And there are four possible answer choices A, B, C, D obviously. We have to pick answer choice A if the quantity in column A is greater than quantity in column B. We pick answer choice B if the quantity in column B is bigger, C if they are equal, and, and, and so forth. Now, the three statements that I make just now, listen very carefully, the three statements that I just made right now, they are all untrue. They are not correct. Let me, let me redo it. Let me re-say it. I'm going to edit this statement. We have to pick the quantity in column A if the quantity in column A is such that it is always greater than quantity in column B. We pick answer choice B if the quantity in column B is always, always, always greater than what we see in column A. And we have to pick quantity, we have to pick answer choice C when these two quantities are always, always, always equal with, to each other without exception. Let's begin. That was a little pep, pep talk. Remember that. Remember the word always. Do you understand? Let's begin. There are two ways you can go about it. We can either plug in numbers. If you want to do that, be my guest. We're not going to plug in numbers. We're just going to do it algebraically. It's simpler. Subtract 2x from both sides. If you subtract 2x from both sides, what we end up here is this is going to drop out. We end up with x squared minus 2x plus 1. And here, just we end up with negative 1. I hope you are able to see that this is a perfect square. This is simply x minus 1 whole square. This is a perfect square. Well, if it's a perfect square, then this quantity, whatever, no matter how many times you try to plug in numbers, you'll always find that, that this quantity is always positive because it's squared. We're comparing some quantity that is positive versus a negative one. Of course, this quantity is always going to be greater than this one. The answer is A. Let's do the next one. I forget to tell you this thing every time in the beginning of the video, and if I forget to tell you every time you watch these videos, most of the times I forget to remind you, but you must always pause the video immediately as soon as you see the problem on the blackboard, pause the video immediately, do it yourself, and then compare your work against the work that you and I do together. You will get a lot more out of these videos that way, instead of sitting passively and staring at the screen. Let's do the next one. Number nine. In number 9, we are told that this quantity W has to be more than 1. That's the given. That's the condition we have to fulfill. That is given. And we are asked to compare these two quantities. 7W minus 4 versus 2W plus 5. And again, you can plug in numbers here if you wanted to. But trust me, if you plug in numbers, there is a very good chance that you're going to uh, muck it up. Muck it up as in M, as in Mary. Not an F. You'll screw it up, you'll mess it up. It's simpler just to do it algebraically so you can see the logic behind it. Because sometimes plugging in numbers, unless you are very clever in picking the numbers, this can get very tricky very fast. We're just going to do it algebraically. We do not want to muck it up. M. Let's solve for W. Let's subtract 2W from both sides. And let's, subtract, let's add 4 to both sides. So that gives us 5w. We are comparing 5w versus 9. That's what we have to compare. Let's divide both sides by 5. So what we are essentially, what we are being, what, you, what we are being essentially asked to compare is w versus a 9 fifth. That's what it boils down to. Which one is greater, w or a 9 fifth? Well, it depends. You see, you could plug a number here, but this is much simpler to see. It depends on what w is. If w happens to be, if w happens to be 10 fifth. If W happens to be 10 fifth versus 9 fifth, if W happens to be 10 fifth, then of course 10 fifth is more than 9 fifth. The answer in this case would be A. 
of W can W be ten fifth? Of course, why not? Because we have met the condition. The condition is that it has to be more than one. Can W be nine fifth? Of course, W can be nine fifth. If W happens to be nine fifth, then the answer is C because they are equal. Can W be eight fifth? Of course, W can be eight fifth. It's still more than one. In which case, the answer is going to be B. As you can see, the answer keeps changing. Therefore, the correct answer here is D. It cannot be determined. It all depends on what the bloody hell W is. We do not know what it, what it is. All we know is it's more than one. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? I know.